Marv is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of EMC Centers of Excellence with 20 years of experience in the IT industry. Sarv currently leads EMC's research and development, global services, and business support operations. The COEs are central to EMC's globalization goals, and Sarv is responsible for uh, scaling and evolving the COEs. So, Sarv, the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm thrilled to be here this evening today to share our story with you. Um, Akila, Ram, <laughs> Tarun, I don't know if you made my job easier or difficult. You said everything that I'm going to say. Um, maybe it'll be easier. Um, we are exactly like uh, uh, many of the cases that you've heard. Uh, uh, we have, uh, being a multinational company, we have the same challenges as uh, many of you have. Uh, silos, controls, matrix reporting, and uh, what kind of work we give to India, and stuff like that. And this is really a story of how we took control of our destiny uh, as a team uh, in my organization from India. This may look like a, a picture-perfect story, um, uh, like you know, a template or framework that we started with. Uh, I must confess it is not. Um, if you recall what Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can connect the dots looking backward. You know, we have to start with the confidence that things will all be falling in place as long as we have the right desire, aspirations, guts, if you will. And that's what happened in our case. Uh, our team had a bigger aspiration. This story is really about how we self-empowered ourselves, how we self-enabled ourselves, and how we persevered around on those. And our story has two faces pre-transformation, uh, the phase from 2007 to uh, 2010, and then subsequently from 2011. In the, you know, in the first phase, our focus was really the fundamentals, the functional excellence. Now, we couldn't really do anything if we don't have the credibility that these guys can do the basics right. So the focus was really people and processes. We could hire the right people and keep them and do the stuff well. And again, there, we didn't distract ourselves. We focused on three big things. Scale. Why is scale important? We didn't get into any of those religious conversations. We will do only products end-to-end. -end. Um, we need only the high, you know, we'll do only the high-value work. No. We went after scale. We took everything that came in our way. The reason was we believed scale is important for a few reasons. One, scale gives as the resources. As you scale, you get more resources to play with. And scale gives us the right seat at the table. Today, we are a 5,000 people organization. 10% of our company's headcount. It can't be ignored. You get it, it opens the door, it gives the seat. And also, it gives the opportunity to experiment because of the resources that you have. The second area that we focused on was values. Yes, like every company, we also have values. We have 10 values at the global level. But what are the most important values for us to stand out? We picked those. The values that we picked are excellence. Being a young organization, we got to make sure we are known for excellence. Excellence in the kind of products or discipline that we have in developing products all the services, how we focus on customers and stuff like that. Collaboration. It is very important to realize that in large organizations, as we grow faster, very easy to get into silos. We decided that's something that we will not have. We'll make sure our teams talk to each other all the time. We'll make sure they share knowledge. They make sure they talk about customers between products and services. And the third value that we focused on was innovation. Here, being an anger organization, we didn't want to be really rhetoric about it. We want to make sure we start slowly um, sowing the seeds for the culture of innovation. And the third area we focused on was talent and leadership. Tarun and others spoke a lot about leadership. We really did uh, you know, focus on leadership and talent. We hired 1,500 
year, uh, people uh, a year, employees a year. And yes, we are big organizations globally, uh, $22 billion um, uh, dollar organization, 50,000 people uh, organization. But the issues that you face in a large organization in established location is totally different from uh, a young location like Bangalore when you hire 1,000, 1,500 people. And there are a lot of people, uh, leaders and um, you know, technical role models to look up to for people in established locations. We don't have all that. We didn't have all that. So what did we do? We decided to take that on our hand. Yes, there were some resources available, but our needs were different. We needed a lot of hand-holding. We needed more prescriptive approach to building our talent base and leadership. Um, the picture you see, all the black ones, were the programs locally developed. And that is a lot. And, you know, things like, for example, as our employees grow up, as they play as part of a global team, a global organization, do they really stand out? Do they have the right skills to stand out? Yes, they are technically strong, but there is a lot more to technical talent as when you work as part of um, a global team as a technical um, resource or, uh, or engineer. And we launched a program called Tech Edge, things that are important for a technical um, 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 a consulting engineer, principal engineers to stand out and be influential in a large project or product. And um, there was a lot of shortage of architects. Do we wait for the market to create the architect for us? Or we do, do we confront it ourselves? So we launched um, an initiative called School of Architects to create the architects ourselves, shorten the cycle. It's, and also we asked ourselves this question. Five years from now, will we commensurately produce the distinguished engineers based on the number of engineers that we have uh, in Bangalore? And how do we do that? How do we create the level playing field for our engineers as they grow up to become future distinguished engineers? We launched a program called Odyssey. And it's not just on the technical ladder, also on the, uh, the management and leadership ladder as well. And when I joined, when we started this journey in 2007, we had 40 managers. Now we have 400 managers. We hired a lot from outside. We promoted a lot of folks from Britain. How do we bring them all together as one team on one platform, orient them towards what we want to do, the values and stuff like that? So we launched a program, a program called the Edge. It's a 15-month process with a lot of classroom interventions, focusing on things that we want to really develop in that level. And we, we, we worked it out with, uh, with our own corporate resources, um, material that we had, and uh, also with the um, uh, Indian Institute of Management. We start with an assessment at the beginning of the 15 months, and we do interim assessments to make sure that the learning sticks, and also we uh, stop, you know, we end it with an assessment. It's been working out very well for us. When you ask for higher level um, responsibility, um, our leaders in corporate challenged us with, do you have a leader, a technical leader, an engineering director that has faced customers day in and day out and faced, faced the wrath, wrath of the customer, uh, been in front of difficult situations, solve problems? Show me. You know, if we wait for that to happen, it'll take another 10, 15 years. And we decided we got to shorten that cycle. So we created a program to create that experience in our, among our senior, amongst our senior engineering managers and leaders. Then also, Tarun alluded to one thing called portfolio. There's no one size that fits. Be used in a large organization, large portfolio, or in different levels of maturity. You got to have you at, you have to attack one by one. You got to have plan for each of them, and that's what we did. We we're very tactful about how we approached it, and we used models like Zanaus, a product maturity model, to have a detailed plan for each of them, and moving one bit at a time. So, what does that? What, you know, what it all results into. In 2007, we were 450 people. By end of 2010, we were 3,000 3, people. And we had no 
consulting engineer, senior level technical talent. We have on, on, on architects. We have now, I mean, by end of uh, 2010, we had 25 plus, plus folks. And we had 15 products that we touched. At the end of uh, 2010, we had 40 plus different products. And also, um, almost all of our global service business units had representation here. Along with that, we also have a um, you know, bunch of products that we started owning from India. Um, can we continue on that track? We've got to shift the gear now. We've got the volume. We've got the scale. We've got to shift. We've got to transform ourselves to do bigger things. That was the phase that I've been on, we have been on from 2011. The focus again here, you know, from functional excellence to now, how can we be strategically relevant to our company? Not just to our company, to the market and the community that we are part of. And we needed a new purpose. And a new purpose, yes, we started with some seeds in the earlier phase, but how do we hone in on the innovation? How do you make sure that the center is known as the center of innovation? And we started the seeds of collaboration in, phase, in the previous phase, but how do we take it to the next level? Like the panel talked about, yes, most of us have a broad portfolio. How do you make sure that the portfolio works for you? How do you get the portfolio coming together, create new possibilities? And with all that, how do you make sure that we get out on the market and create revenue opportunities, working with our immediate adjacent um, um, geographies? And how do you make sure our brand is visible outside in the ecosystem? How do you work with the ecosystem? This is the mecca of IT services. How do you work with that ecosystem to make sure you know, we stand out? Talking of innovation, focus was deepening the culture of innovation further. Again, how do we create more IPs here? Lots of foundational programs around how do we, um, uh, helping our employees understand how do they identify Patentable, oppor uh, patentable opportunities as they work on products. And not just that, how do we uh, understand customers, develop customer insights, and use that to influence product roadmap? Also along the way, how do we extend our innovation to universities and use that to do more? That way, we, you know, we, are, we become more successful in each of our business units. And also, how do we drive innovation with a purpose? Don't do innovation for the sake of innovation, but how do we take that into the immediate market and realize results sooner? Cross BU interlock. Again, focus on not just simple collaboration, but focus on identifying um, areas in between our products, adjacencies, solutions that can solve bigger problems by bringing our products together. And what kind of, looking into the future, what kind of strategic competencies we can build across all of our business units? For example, mobility. Yes, we are a systems and data center products company for the most part, but our products have to look contemporary in the future. Otherwise, our relevance will be in question, taking advantage of mobility and other technologies. Talking of mobility, yes, though you know, we are a large storage company, part of our business, and a lot of the information consumption is going to be through mobile mobility in the future. How do we make, using this competence that we are building for the future, how do we make that experience, how do we make sure that the experience gets better in the future for our customers? And we are a large products organization as well as we are a large service organization, customer support as well as part of, uh, is part of it as well. How do we, you know, for, for a, lot of, a lot of the products that we work on, we also do customer support globally here. How do we bring it together to make sure we really notch up our customer experience globally? Because these guys come together. And on the go-to-market side, we have joint goals established with our APJ markets and Middle East markets. And also, we started programs for enabling the SI ecosystem with our products and technologies. And that would hopefully have global impact as well. Also, joint solutions working with other centers. A panel talked about it as well. How do you think global? We work with our China center, which is also a reasonable size center, 
and we together work with our APJ market sales organization and think about solutions that are more relevant to these markets. We do have already wins in this space as well. And EBC, Executive Briefing Center, you can't drive innovation, you can't drive create new possibilities unless we have access to customers, we get to speak to customers. We created Executive Briefing Center and we have you know, most of our senior engineers have an opportunity to stand in front of the customers, talk to them, and understand their pain points and opportunities. And it's not just customers from the immediate geography. You know, most of the Fortune 500 IT organizations, Fortune 500 customers' IT organizations, they visit. They do either have their own direct presence or they do outsource. As part of it, there are, there's a huge traffic here. How do we tap into the traffic? How do you host them? We host a lot of them as well here. They are our global customers. As the word spreads out, our account managers in the US do keep in touch. Hey, can you host my customer for a few hours in your center? That helps our company as well as us to stand in front of them and talk to them and, and, and learn from them. On the ecosystem, the focus here, here is thought leadership. We stand for cloud, big data, and trust. How do you take that message to the ecosystem? And the, eco the SIs are part of the ecosystem as well, and the, the ecosystem is a lot more uh, uh, than the SIs. Also, academic relationship. Beyond uh, the research relationship that we have, how do we you know, reach out to the large number of engineering colleges uh, that are there in our country and help them think about the newer competences that are required in the marketplace. And also, deeper engagement with government. The policymakers, how do we make sure we have the opportunity to work with them? And also, at the same time, how do we you know, come across as a great corporate citizen uh, in the community that we work with? So all of that, Yes, they're all great intent, but you know the struggle. The great intents don't translate into great results. How do we enable ourselves with the right structure to achieve that, achieve great results? Um, we put in place the foundational aspects to achieve, um, you know, to, to drive the execution. A lot of the goals that I'm talking about, a lot of the vision, everything is um, driven by um, 35 of uh, our senior leaders in the organization. We then take that down to another 50, 60 of our employees, my senior um, managers and senior technical folks. They drive work streams and, and devise goals and action plans. And that gets communicated to 400, 450 managers and senior technical talent we, that we have in the organization. And we drive that process and uh, the reviews on a quarterly basis. And that gets communicated, success or um, shared on a, um, in a um, periodic basis that creates a lot of excitement, success breeds success, and there is all around support for this. And also in the process, we made it win-win for our stakeholder BUs. Um, I heard a lot of um, you know, uh, tips around how you become smart, how you become politically savvy, and that's what we've been doing every single day. So, yes, all of that coming together, what kind of results we see? On the innovation front, a couple of years ago, we had filed 0 0.05 patents per 10 engineers. Today, we file one patent per 10 engineer. And we, had, we conduct every year as a company global innova innovation conference. And in the last couple of years, the number of finalist ideas in the Innovation Showcase Conference is 40 from Bangalore. And 18 plus ideas from our center has gone into influencing product roadmap into hundreds of millions of dollars in um, incremental revenue. On the cross B interlock, and we're working on five different competencies that are important for our future, for the company, uh, across all of our product organizations. And we have, on an ongoing basis, 50 plus interlock ideas between products 
It could be solutions or it could be just feature enhancements between products or integration between products to solve bigger problems. And as a result of a collaboration between our interlocks between our product and services organization, in the last you know, two years, our total customer satisfaction levels globally has gone up by 10 to 20 percent, depending on which product we are talking about. On the go-to-market side, we launched three solutions from here that have customers in India, in APJ, and Middle East. And one of them, for example, is a solution that we launched for Garmin that is applicable for the broader Commonwealth countries. And we launched service offerings, two service offerings we never had in our portfolio before. And we have customers for them in um, APJ as well as EMEA. And we have hosted 500 plus customers in our EBC in the last couple of years. And on the ecosystem, we are working with six universities. We have six research proje projects going on, extending the kind of work that we are doing uh, in our center with universities. And we have touched 95,000 engineering graduates in the last couple of years across 200 engineering colleges, helping them understand what's happening in cloud big data and trust. And we have, we are working with five global SIs very deeply today as a result of our connection efforts. Good. It's a work in progress, again. Um, it is, um, as the panel said, I'm very optimistic and positive about the future, but that will happen only if we take control of our destiny. Yes, odds may be not in our favors at times. Uh, internal issues in a corporation may be challenging. But I think if we have the right intent, right purpose, and if you want to go after it, I think things will fall in place. The dots will get connected eventually. With that, thank you for the opportunities and all.